Good evening, everyone. My name is Maureen McCarthy, and I am the president of the Friends of Ed the School of Education at Salem State University. On behalf of the Friends, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the first of a four-part series, Owning It, Caring for the Self and Others, presented by Dr. MC, Teresa Melito Connors. The Friends of the School of Education is a group of Salem State University alumni whose mission is to advocate for and support the students, faculty, and administration of the School of Education. In service to our mission, we have sponsored events such as the Sheila P. Carney Educators Pinning Ceremony, the Educators Hall of Fame, several best practices conferences, as well as the self-care series. Our presenter this evening is Dr. Teresa Melito Connors, who earned her BA in theater studies at Emerson College, her master's in education in school counseling at Salem State University, and her PhD in educational leadership at Leslie University. She is the founder of Dr. MC's Self-Care Cabaret, which has a focus on health and well-being. Her work is notable for its relevance to those of us whose daily lives present challenges to taking time for ourselves. Right now, it is my privilege to present to you, Dr. MC, Teresa Melito Connors. Good evening. Thank you for that lovely introduction. I think we are ready to go. Folks will need to have um, something to write with and something to write on. Uh, handy with them. So if you need to grab something uh, right now, it would be a great time to do that. And I do see some familiar names in the list here and familiar faces, and that's very exciting. Welcome and thanks for coming to hang out with me and Salem State this evening. Um, so let's see. I'm Dr. MC. We I presented last April um, a one-shot workshop on self-care, and we thought myself and the folks at Salem State and the friends of Salem State University thought it went really well and we should put together a four part series. So this is uh, very exciting to me to launch this this evening and I hope that you'll continue to join me throughout the remainder of the series. It's spaced out, we'll talk about that in, uh, in just a second, the other dates, so you can make sure you mark your calendars now and not miss them. So let's get started. So tonight, here we are for the first part one, we're gonna really evaluate our self-care routines and talk about building a sustainable routine and evaluate our strengths and weaknesses. Um, on November 4th, we're gonna talk about the intersection of trauma, resilience, and self-care and how that all works in with one another. And I'm gearing for about 90 minutes or so every session. Um, so just for, for planning purposes. And the third session in March, is going to look at developing a growth mindset. We're gonna talk about growth mindset, fixed mindsets and kind of the benefits um, of that and what that can mean for your life and how you can work to develop more of a growth mindset. And then the fourth series, the fourth session is um, going to be in April. And this one is going to be examining imp uh, explicit bias, microaggressions and the power of language. So I'm really excited to put that one um, together and share it with my friends at Salem State as well when we get further through the school year here. So tonight, before we go too far deep, let's just have a check-in. How are we feeling? You wanna tell me in the chat? I'd love to communicate with you that way. I will be monitoring the chat as well throughout the presentation to answer any questions you may have. And we'll use that as our primary way of communicating this evening. So how are you feeling? Are you feeling tired, happy, sad? All feelings are valid. I'm just curious, just take a moment to check in, and see how you're feeling. Pretty stressed, sadly. Sore and rushed. Feeling content tonight, that's good. <laughs> it's good, all feelings are good. But definitely, there's definitely been a lot of, um, things are moving very fast. Things have been very stressful. I would, I would agree with that from my perspective. I had contractors at my house all day today doing work and that's always like 
super chill when um, that's going on. No stress at all. I actually didn't have power in the house all day up until about 45 minutes before the presentation. So I'm glad we were able to get me up and running for this evening. Um, this is the first time I've stopped for the day. I'm coming down from that hyper arousal. Sure. So it's just important. We tend to be very disconnected from our physical body. We tend to not really listen to it as it's telling us what it means. And we, we think we know better than what our body is telling us, but we really need to get in the habit of check, checking in with yourself periodically, seeing where maybe you're holding tension in your body, where you may be sore, or if you're hungry, or maybe you need to use the restroom or whatever it is. So somebody in the chat, I don't, that's why I'm here. Yes, this is excellent. So we're going to talk more about that. So first, we won't dwell on negative for too long, but I, we do need to talk about stress. Stress in your body actually causes so many unpleasant health consequences. So what happens in your body? We have in our nervous system, there's the fight or flight response. That's your stress response. So when you're under a threat of some sort, or you're being chased by a bear in the woods, you want your fight and flight to kick into high gear and get you to safety. But unfortunately, what happens when we experience stress and we don't have the tools to manage that and we don't take the time to really get in touch with how we like to de-stress, you can get stuck in that elevated state of fight or flight. And that's very disruptive to your body because you can see on the screen here, and when you're in fight or flight, your breathing rate is increased. Your blood pressure is elevated. Your heart rate, your metabolism, your blood sugar, your sensory awareness, everything is in that heightened state. You're not able to think clearly. You're not able to concentrate or be creative. Your immune system suffers and your digestive system also suffers. So where we want to be is the opposite of that. So we want to be able to, to activate that rest and digest response, that parasympathetic nervous system. And you can see on the screen, the opposite happens when we're here. So now our breathing rate is regular. Our blood pressure is lower. Our blood sugar, our adrenaline, our stress hormones, everything is lower. This is where we're able to think more clearly, concentrate, be creative. Our immune systems are functioning well, and our digestive systems are functioning well also. And we're going to talk about quick ways that we can kind of uh, stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system so we can help get into that rest and digest state faster. So when we neglect our self-care, when we don't take care of ourselves, these are some of the things that you run the risk of experiencing. And you may look at this list and think, yep. That's me. I know for myself, I definitely, my, my eye twitches. That's like first sign for me when I'm not taking care of myself and um, stomach issues. Definitely my digestive, digestive tract suffers. I'll get headaches. Um, yeah. So not good. We don't want, we don't want to be here and have more of this. So what am I talking about when I say self-care? I'm not talking about taking an occasional bubble bath or an occasional spa day or a mani-pedi. Like that's great. If those are pieces that you want to be part of your self-care routine. But what I'm really talking about is this definition here on the screen. And I'm going to highlight a few pieces of this that are really important to remember. It is the daily process. Foundational work required. Think of a foundation of a house. If you have a weak, shabby, shaky foundation for your house, you're not going to have a very good house. So that's you. This is your foundation. This is what you do every day. So you show up as the best you possible. Now, I know nobody has extra time to do these things. So this becomes problematic, but I'm going to talk about little things, little tweaks and things you can do to try to start building some of these things in. Okay. So let's also talk about first what self-care is not. It is not optional. It is not chores. Like we just don't add it to our to-do list and then stress out about it like everything else on there. That's counterproductive. It's not selfish. 
This isn't something you do because you're selfish. It's not a luxury. It's not an emergency response or a quick fix. So it's not, it's not a one and done. It's not, you're feeling a little stressed and overwhelmed. So let's just drop down to a, a yoga pose, do a little down dog and, oh, we're good. That's good. Good for the next six months. No, or like, you know, a spa day. People like to use that. Yeah, spa day is great, but how often can you do that? That's not realistic. And that also is, tends to be very expensive. Self-care is also not punishment or extreme. It's not dieting. That comes from a place of restriction. That is not honoring your body and feeding your body from a place of love. It's not abusing substances. It's not talking badly about yourself, even if you're trying to motivate. It does, it's not buying something that promises to make you love yourself more. Trust me, I've tried. It doesn't work. It's not socializing for fear of missing out or FOMO. It's not saying yes just because you want to be nice or afraid of disappointing someone. Or it's not anything that shames your eating habits or your physical appearance. Okay. So we're going to assess where we're at right now in our own routines. This is not to make anyone feel bad. If you score low across the board, great. You just have more, more room to grow. So chances are you'll have some areas of strengths and weaknesses, and you will have some areas where you score low. And again, I just want to preface this. It's okay. So grab a pencil and something to write on, and I'm going to lead you through this assessment. This is not my assessment. I did not develop this, but I love it. It's by um, Dr. Cook Cotton. And it's 24 questions or so, and we'll score you across all the domains. And if you've done this before, because I do see some familiar faces here with me, if you've done this before, it's actually good to do it periodically to kind of see where you're at and if things have changed. Um, maybe the last time you took it, everything was very low or maybe it was very high. And now you're seeing that you've had some dips. Either way, totally fine. No harm in doing it um, occasionally again. All right. So let's get started. So the first area we're going to look at is the domain of mindful relaxation. There are four questions. You are going to answer the questions on a scale of one to five. The grading is there across the bottom. If this first uh, prompt, I did something creative to relax, draw, played an instrument, wrote creatively, sang or organized, whatever. If you did that in the last week, Zero times, you give yourself a one. If you did it regularly six or more times in the last week or so, you'd give yourself a five. So we see how that, that scale works. So again, think about like the last week or so of your life when we're answering these questions. So that's the first one. Second question. I listened to relax, maybe to music or a podcast or a radio show or rainforest sounds or something else on a scale of one to five. How many times in the last week? Question three. I sought out images to relax, maybe art or a film or window shopping or hanging out in nature. Question four, I sought out smells to relax. So perhaps lotion or candles or nature or incense or even the smells of baking. How many times in the last week? Great. You're going to take those four numbers that you just had and add those up and just hold on to that number. That's your mindful relaxation score. Now we're going to move to the next section. The next section has five questions, and this is physical care. So question one, same scale. I ate a variety of nutritious foods. So vegetables and proteins and fruits and grains. Okay. 
Question two, I exercised at least 30 to 60 minutes. Question three, I took part in sports, dance, or other scheduled physical activities, perhaps a sports team or a dance class of some sort. Next question. I practiced yoga or another mind-body practice, perhaps Taekwondo or Tai Chi or something of that nature. Okay, this next question is actually reverse scored. It's the only one like that, just to make sure you're paying attention. I did sedentary activities instead of exercising. So if you did that, not at all last week, you'd give yourself a five. If you did that regularly, you would get a one. So it's just the opposite, just for this one question. And now take your score from those last five questions. That's your physical care score. Add those up and hold on to that number. Great. Next section, four questions, self-compassion and purpose. I kindly acknowledged my own challenges and difficulties on a scale of one to five, and we're back to the, the normal scale, never zero being one, five regularly, six plus days. Second question. I engaged in supportive and comforting self-talk, something like, my effort is valuable and meaningful. Sometimes those that inner self-talk can be very difficult. Question three, I gave myself permission to feel my feelings. So perhaps you allowed yourself to cry or whatever other feeling you allowed yourself to feel it. And last question for this section, I experienced meaning and or a larger purpose in my work or school life. So maybe you did something that was for a cause. Great. Take your scores, your numbers from those last four questions. Add those up. That's your self-compassion and purpose score. And hold on to that for a few more minutes. We're almost through. Next section, four questions. Supportive relationships. I spent time with people who are good to me, who support, encourage, and believe in me. On a scale of one to five, how often in the last week? Next question. I felt supported by people in my life. Question three. I felt confident that people in my life would respect my choice if I said no on a scale of one to five. Last question in this section, I felt that I had someone who would listen to me if I became upset, perhaps a friend, 
or a counselor or a group of folks that you may be connected with. Okay. You're gonna take your score from those last four questions, add those up please, and put it aside. That's your supportive relationships score. Moving along, supportive structure. Four questions. I maintained a manageable schedule. Spoiler alert, 70, 80 hours a week, not a manageable schedule. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> Next question. I kept my work, schoolwork area organized to support my work or school tasks. Question three, I maintain balance between the demands of others and what is important to me. Last question in this section, I maintained a comforting and pleasing living environment. Excellent. You're gonna take your scores from those last four questions, add those together, and that is your supportive structure score. And now we are on the last section. Mindful awareness, three questions. I had a calm awareness of my thoughts on a scale of one to five. I had calm awareness of my feelings on a scale of one to five. Last I had a calm awareness of my body. Excellent. Add those last three together, and that is your mindful awareness score. So let's see, how did we do? First section, mindful relaxation, your maximum could have been a 20. Do you want to tell me in the chat what you got? No, no shame. You don't have to. But if you want to tell me how you did, so the closer you were to 20, the closer this is an area of strength for you. The closer you are to not 20, maybe an area of weakness. Okay. What was it? Some, some middle of the road here, 13, 11, 14, 11. Okay. What about next one? Physical care. You could have had 25 as a maximum. How'd we do here? nine okay so that that there's a starting point we could we could beef that up a little bit 15 okay 10 12 all right you can probably already start to see maybe where the areas of weakness are next section you could have had a maximum of 20 for self-compassion and purpose how did we do here okay 13 Six, okay, so we're gonna work on that. 12, 17, okay, so we got an area of strength. Next section, supportive relationships. This one would have been out of 20. How'd we do? 19, all right, there we go. I knew we'd get an area of strength in there. <laughs> 13, good. 15. Okay, so this is this is a group that's got supportive relationships is ten, trending towards an area of strength. That's excellent. Maybe it's that Salem State Alumni Network that's helping out with that. <laughs> the next section is supportive structure. How do we do here? Could have been a 20, a nine, okay. 16, all right. All right, so maybe there's a little work, a little work there. 
And our last section would have been out of 15, could have been your maximum, your mindful awareness. How do we do here? 12, 12, six, okay. Six, okay. So we have some, so we have some where to grow in, in this area. 14. So it's funny. So you can already see just for yourself kind of where you are, where you maybe want to focus some energy, maybe pick one uh, domain kind of area where you have some weaknesses. And we're going to talk about all of the domains more in depthly in the next hour or so. But you may, you know, I would suggest that you don't try to do everything starting tomorrow and flip this around 100%. I tend to go like two, two, head first into things. So I would more recommend like we pick, you pick one area and that's where you'll focus. And then eventually you can add in more. So let's talk about the domains. Now there are 10 domains of self-care and they are outlined for you on the screen, nutrition, hydration, exercise, soothing strategies, et cetera. And we're going to talk about each of these domains. We're going to talk about ways we can kind of practice excellent in each of them. So first, Nutrition and hydration. You have to drink water every day. Plain water is ideal. You can, you know, non caffeinated herbal teas, Pellegrino, polar seltzer, that kind of stuff, sure, fine. But also make sure you're having plain water as well. Carry a water bottle with you, do whatever you have to do to try to get up your water intake. But again, don't go. If you're drinking no water now, don't try to drink a gallon of water a day starting tomorrow. Maybe you start trying to get in, I don't know, 30 ounce, 32 ounces a day, something like that. And then eventually you can build up to it. It'll be likely be more sustainable if you do little chunks, little chunks along the way. Additionally, we have to feed our body. You have to honor your hunger cues. So what that means, and this is, this comes from a framework called intuitive eating, which is very near and dear to my heart in the interest of full disclosure, I'm in recovery for disordered eating and exercise bulimia. So feeding my body and actually listening to my body um, from a place of love is not something I did for, for many years. And intuitive eating is not a diet. It is a whole framework, a whole theoretical framework on how to feed your body and get back in touch with your hunger cues, because we tend to be very disconnected from this. So if that resonates with you and you're like, oh my God, I need that, then I would highly recommend looking into intuitive eating or the health at every size movement as well. I do talk more about this on my blog and on my podcast. We can't go too deep into it tonight. Um, But anyway, just a little fun fact there for you and some follow-up research you can do. Um, additionally, you need to slow down when you're eating. We tend not to do this either. We, we choke down food while we're running from meeting to meeting or we're skipping meals and we're not honoring our hunger. So it actually takes your stomach 20 minutes to tell your brain you're full. So if you're running around from place to place, choking down food, grabbing something here and there, you're likely not even, you're not even connected to what's happening. Ideally, we don't want to skip meals. We want to have our breakfast, lunch, and dinner and snacks as needed. And we want to eat a variety of nutritious foods. And as much as possible, plan it out, not in a restrictive like meal planning, measuring out the cup of pasta, and like not that, but just so you're setting yourself up for success. So like a lot of times on Sunday, I'll kind of think about what I want to eat for the week. Maybe I'm going to make some tuna fish. I'm going to have tuna sandwiches for lunch. I have some original recipes that I also share on my blog. Maybe I'm going to make a batch of my healthy oatmeal muffins and those will be breakfast for the week. I just kind of, I think about it in ways to just set myself up for success, not in a restrictive way. There's a difference. Um, And I did mention resources. So I do want to share this with folks now in the chat. I'm putting a uh, link In the chat for you, it is a link to my website, drmcselfcare.com. This one, though, slash resources. You're going to head over there if you want any of, um, if you want the reference sheet from this evening's presentation, you'll be able to access it there um, through that link. So I don't share the slide deck in its entirety, although this is being recorded. So you can certainly access it later, but you can, if you sign up there and go to that website, I will send you a reference sheet, but you have a lot of this information for future reference. Okay, next domain, 
the exercise domain, we have to move our body. A lot of us are too sedentary in our lifestyles for a variety of reasons. And it's really important, though, that you move your body. Now, it doesn't have to be extreme. It doesn't have to be at a gym every day. You don't have to do CrossFit and Spartan races. If you want to, go for it. But that's not what you have to do. But you do have to move your body. The American Heart Association tells us 10,000 steps a day is ideal. That's a lot of steps. More recent research tells us, though, if you're not getting at least 5,000, you should reevaluate your lifestyle and think about some ways you can add in little movement. Even things like sometimes I'll throw on music while I'm emptying or filling the dishwasher and have myself a little five minute dance party to my favorite Lizzo song. Those are the ways I try to add in more movement. It doesn't have to be this, this epic thing that takes hours on end. If you only have five minutes, five minutes is okay. Do a little stretching. You don't even have to get up and do the stretching right in your chair. It's still going to be beneficial. It's still movement. Ideally, we don't want to sit for long periods of time. So you have to promise me at the end of this presentation, you'll get up and, and shake it out and maybe do a little stretching. You want to engage in fun physical activities. So things that are joyful to you. If it's not joyful for you to go to the gym and saddle up on a treadmill for 45 minutes at a time, don't do it. There's no point in engaging in things that are not bringing you joy. You don't have to do it in excess or do anything extreme. All movement is good. And as much as possible, again, you'll see a theme about scheduling and really setting yourself up for success. And especially right now, thanks to COVID, so many people pivoted and now their content is available online. So you don't even have to go to a public place and make a fool out of yourself. You can do it right in the comfort of your own home. You can access so much content for free on YouTube. Other people have small donations. One of my favorites, if you happen to be a, um, a Broadway girl like me, I recommend 567 Broadway. Um, his workouts are a lot of fun, all free. And... Um, was another oh I love Zumba the fitness marshals a lot of fun on YouTube as well and Body Groove is a paid service they're a lot of fun but there's there's so many of them and someone in the chat no not sitting for long periods of time must be nice major con of my job yeah I know me too but as much as possible I try to add movement breaks where I can and really try it's hard but you have to make like a concerted effort to get up go to, you know, walk somewhere, even just do a little stretching. If you work, I don't know if you work from home or where you work, but even stretching while you're sitting, you know, in a meeting, if you can, little things, if you're whatever it is you're doing, we have to get creative in how we can weave this seamlessly into our daily routines. Our next domain is soothing strategies. This is where we want to engage in activities like deep breathing. This is where we can really calm our nervous system and help promote mental clarity and restore balance. We can also think about calming things, or you can do something physical, intellectual, interpersonal, or creative to relax. You can use soothing smells or sounds or tactile experiences. I tend to have little crystals and, and doodads and things to play with around my workspaces that I can use throughout the day. And prioritize this. And I know this is this hard. It's the first thing we stop doing as soon as we start to feel stressed. We have to shift that. You have to put this stuff first. And when you start to do that, you'll feel the benefits and you'll want more of it. But it's time to get off the cycle of deprivation, the roller coaster of just like, oh, I'll get to it later. I'll, 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 I'll do yoga someday. No, now you have to start this now. But little things, again, you're not going to revamp everything overnight. Little things. Okay, so let's do some deep breathing together. Deep breathing is the most efficient, effective, free. You can do it anywhere. You don't need any special tools. The most way that you can really help, we talked about the nervous system, really help activate that rest and digest response and bring a sense of calm. And the more you do these things, you get better at it and you actually help to build your resilience. And then when the stress hits, you react different. 
it's a, it's a bit of a phenomenon. You'll have to just trust me on this if you have, have not experienced this until you've given it a little time for yourself. So let's try this. If it's comfortable for you, and there's tons of different breathing techniques. This is just very basic deep breathing. But I'm going to invite you to put a hand on your chest and one on your belly. And you can close your eyes or lower your gaze. And you're going to take a nice big deep breath in through your nose and try to make the exhale through your mouth longer than your inhale. So again, exhale longer than the inhale. That's a really good way to stimulate that parasympathetic nervous system and really engage that rest and digest response. So let's try it. We'll do three rounds together. So we're going to take a nice big deep breath in through the nose. And you're going to feel your belly fill all the way. You're going to have a brief pause. And now exhale fully. And really feel that belly empty on the exhale. Let's try that again. In through the nose. Really feel that belly up all the way. And a nice exhale. And last time, in through the nose, and exhale. It's so simple. Really beneficial to get into that habit. There, and like I said, there's other breathing techniques. If you're like, man, well, that was weird. I don't like doing that. There's other things you can do. We're not going to talk about other ones tonight. Maybe in one of the future sessions, we can teach some additional breathing methods. I also do share more techniques on my social media pages and um, blog, podcast, all the places. I'm always pumping out different things. Or you can do your own research and look up breathing techniques. However, this is the easiest get you started. Next domain, self-awareness and mindfulness. This is where we want to have calming awareness of our thoughts, our feelings, and our body, that we carefully select the thoughts that, and feelings that we allow to guide our actions. Meditation can be a great practice for this domain. And I want you to think of meditation as a muscle. We put up, we have a lot of like mm, barriers when it comes to meditation. People are like, eh, I don't want to sit on the floor in the pose and think about nothing for 45 minutes. I can't do that. Okay, fine. Listen. You don't have to sit in any particular pose. You sit where you're comfortable. Make your body comfortable. You can do it lying down. You can do it sitting in a chair. Whatever it is, all you're doing is just slowing down the traffic in your mind. You're just breathing. And if you can only do it for a couple of minutes, you'll still feel benefits. I had a girlfriend tell me recently on, on one of my podcast episodes, actually, she was talking about how she meditates for one minute in the morning. When she wakes up, she just gives herself one minute to breathe and center herself and get herself ready for the day and then goes about her business. And she feels benefits even from that just short, intentional pause, bringing that mindfulness right into the start of the day. Excellent. I personally love guided meditations, but I like short ones, like three, five, maybe 15, 20 minutes. That's like a super long one though for me. I tend to like them quicker. I don't have a lot of time to do this. But if you start small too, think about if you've never meditated before, don't try to do a 45 minute meditation right out of the gate. You likely that will be too much. So think of it like a muscle. You wouldn't run a marathon tomorrow, hopefully, if you hadn't been training for one. So you're not going to be able to meditate for a long period of time if you haven't built up that skill. Additionally, mindful eating or intuitive eating can also fall into this domain. Yoga or another mind-body practice. Again, yoga is one of those things that people are hesitant to try. We put up a lot of barriers for ourselves and a lot of limitations. We may think like, oh, I'm not thin enough, or I'm not flexible enough, or I'm too old, or I'm too this, or I'm too that, whatever it is, every body can do yoga. Now, you may want to modify. Maybe you're only ready right now for chair poses, or only standing poses, or poses where you use blocks and bolsters and really get into a restorative practice. 
no harm. All you're doing, again, slowing down, bringing mindfulness into your life. We're going to talk more about mindfulness in a minute. You're connecting your breath to your movement. It's all you're doing, that mind-body connection. And it doesn't have to be epic. If you've never done this, start small. Can take Maybe Google a couple of chair poses or standing poses that you'd like to get started with and take it from there. And additionally, we can acknowledge things for which we are grateful. So let's talk about mindfulness. This is one of those words that gets thrown around all the time. This is my favorite depiction of mindfulness. You got two people walking in a park. The one on the left, their physical body is there, but they're not there. They are, their head is in 9,000 other places. They're worried about their to-do list, what they got to do tomorrow. They're worried about what they got to do six months from now and what happened 10 years ago. Like they are so not in the present moment. Whereas the person on the right, they're paying, they're, they're there, right? They're paying attention. They're feeling the warmth of the sun. They're feeling what their friend is talking about. They're paying attention to being there in that moment. They're seeing the beauty that surrounds them. They're not worried about anything but the present moment. It's all you got. So mindfulness is the awareness that arises through paying attention on purpose in the present moment non-judgmentally. So we can't be mindful and like beat ourselves up about being mindful. So we have to be non-judgmental about it. You're in the here and now, and that's okay. So how can we invite more mindfulness into our lives? Because this tends to be something that's like, yeah, that would be nice, but how do I do it? So these are my four favorite ways to practice mindfulness. So first, and this slide is actually included for you in the reference sheet. Several of the slides actually are that I felt folks may want to access later. So again, want to make sure you head over to that drmcselfcare.com slash resources. Okay. So first, you start to feel stressed, right? You can feel that, whew, that heat rising and you know that you are, you are stressed out. See if you can get to a place where you practice stop. Stop what you're doing. Take a breath. Observe your inner and outer worlds and then proceed. You're just giving yourself that momentary pause to bring you back down into the present moment before proceeding. The next one, reflect on the day so far and ask yourself what went well. We tend to do what? The opposite of that. We focus on negative Negative, 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 what went wrong, what we should have said, what we didn't say, ugh, what somebody else said, what this happened, blah, blah, blah. We don't think about what went well. It's a little shift can have a great impact. Next one, the rainbow connection. We can do this right now. Do it in the space you're in, or if you're near a window, you can peek out your window if you can see. But gaze around the room you're in or out a window. And see if you can spot something of every color of the rainbow. So do you see something red, something orange, yellow, blue, indigo, violet? You can also do this outside. Take a walk around your neighborhood. And really be there in the present moment. Don't be the person on the left of that previous screen. Be the person on the right. And see if you can spot something of every color of the rainbow. Again, just bringing you back down into the present moment. And this last one we can do together as well. I want you to stretch your arms out nice and wide. Like you're going to give the whole world a hug. And I think the whole world could really use a hug. And I want you to breathe in through your nose on the, as you stretch out. And on the exhale, I want you to give yourself a hug. And really give yourself a squeeze. Really feel that light therapeutic touch, that gentle pressure, and give yourself a squeeze. You can repeat that as necessary. So again, just four little ways that we can start to invite more mindfulness into our lives. There are probably 
hundreds, if not thousands of other ways that you can invite mindfulness. So if this resonates with you, by all means, maybe look into some other activities that you can do. Developing an attitude of gratitude. This is another way when we, you know, the rainbow connection, I love the rainbow connection too. I'm a, I'm a Kermit the Frog fan. So that really just speaks to my, my love of the Muppets. Anyway, side note. Okay. Attitude of gratitude. When we express gratitude, it's actually a mood booster. It helps increase your happiness and health and improve your relationships. There is research to support that when you practice gratitude, it helps rewire neural pathways in your brain to do these things. So why not give it a whirl? That's pretty compelling. So gratitude can be for someone else, for yourself, or for something. Because when we think negative thoughts, we attract more negative. So how can we get started? Well, first, you could say thank you. You could give someone a sincere compliment. You start a gratitude journal. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, but maybe you do it on a note on your phone or even a Google Doc, or if you want, certainly to purchase or create some sort of fancy journal to use, absolutely go for it. You can write down three to five things every day you're grateful for. One thing, if that's all you can think of. You could do a gratitude jar. So similar concept, you get some sort of vessel or box that you want to use and little slips of paper and every day or week or month, maybe do it as a family or a class or as a group of people. And every day or whenever you feel like it, add something to the gratitude jar. And at a later date, go through all the pieces and reflect on all the things you have to be grateful for. You can also write a gratitude letter to someone, perhaps as a coach or a mentor or a friend that you never properly thanked for something or a teacher can also maybe set a timer to remind yourself every day, set a calendar alert. Now is my five minute gratitude practice. You can also start a, like a Google doc or a note on your phone. That's just one giant gratitude inventory. Maybe you can come up with 50 things or a hundred things or people, et cetera, that you're grateful for. And then in those moments where you're feeling less than grateful, you have something to reflect on so you can help flip that thought. So just some ideas to think about and start inviting more gratitude into your life. Okay. The rest domain and often neglected area of self-care. You have to get enough sleep. So when you wake up in the morning, ready? You should feel rested and restored. I know. You shouldn't feel like you have to chug a gallon of coffee to function. If you do, if that's how you feel when you wake up in the morning, you're likely not getting as good of sleep as you could. So for adults, typically we need seven to nine hours of sleep. If you have a Fitbit or any type of activity tracker, they, those actually give you some sleep statistics that may be insightful to how restful your sleep really is. But additionally, we can plan restful and rejuvenating breaks throughout the day. We can rest when needed, when if you're not feeling well, or maybe after a long period of, of working hard or a lot of effort, you can also take planned breaks or plan or schedule activities that are not work or school related. I promise the world will go on turning if you take a break. And I know that that's hard and we don't always feel that way. And sometimes it's like, you know what, it's just easier that I do this right now instead of having to then play catch up when after I take a day off. But it's better if you can get into a habit of doing that and honoring your rest. Additionally, we need to take time away from electronics. I know we're on Zoom this evening. However, it's really toxic to our nervous system when we are constantly attached to screens. Because it's, it's too much noise. It's too much stimulation for our nervous system. And make time in your schedule to get enough sleep. So if you're like me and you need at least eight hours, well, let's say I gotta have to get up at six o'clock in the morning every day. Well, then my little tail better be in bed by at least 10 or I'm already setting myself up to not feel well the next day. Okay. So how else can we work to improve our sleep? Well, 
Here's a few I want to share about 10 other tips with you, little tweaks that you may be able to do and start to incorporate into your evening routine to promote better sleep. So first, your bedroom temperature plays a factor. Ideally, your bedroom temperature should be about 68 degrees or 68 degrees. When you drink water, it helps you regulate your body temperature. And you can also play around maybe with cooling sheets or mattress toppers or anything like that if, if you need to manipulate the temperature by a degree or two. Additionally, the bedroom should only be for sleep. As much as possible, try, try, try not to do work in the same space where you sleep. It's confusing to your brain to go into that space and then be expected to shut down for sleep time when it's also the space you work in. We also want to limit any light sources. So any outside light pollution or light from devices, you want to sleep in as close to darkness as possible. You can journal right before bed. This is a great way to clear the junk out of your head and, and end the day on a positive note. Maybe this is when you do your gratitude journaling, or maybe this is where you practice what went well at the end of the day, right before you go to bed. Additionally, you can listen to guided meditations, visualizations, hypnosis, or white noise to help you fall asleep. You can also do some gentle stretching or breathing exercises, that basic breathing that we did, maybe... Three to five rounds before bed. It'd be nice, kind of calm that nervous system. Be mindful of any exercise that is too um, energizing, uh, too close to bedtime. So maybe a Zumba class at 8.30 at night may um, not be ideal. Um, diet and supplements. Your diet and supplements. Um play a factor into how well you sleep. So if you're needing that late afternoon cup of coffee, that could be impacting your ability to sleep. Um, different foods like carbohydrates and sugar are, you know, tend to be stimulating. So that's can be more challenging if you're having those later in the day, whereas foods like nuts are known to help us um, help you sleep. So maybe something like that, if you need that evening snack, or before bed, or also be mindful of any supplements that you take or vitamins. Some of them have energizing qualities and they're actually meant to be taken in the morning because of that. So if you forget to take them in the morning, you're like, oh, whatever, I'll just take them in the afternoon. Depending upon what they are, those could also be energizing. The smell of lavender is known to be very calming. So perhaps a, a scented eye pillow or an oil diffuser or a candle or a pillow spray or another way to start inviting that smell into your uh, routine. A weighted blanket can be very helpful. There's not a lot of, um, you know, hardcore peer reviewed research on weighted blankets, but there is a lot of anecdotal research on it. And the idea is that eight to 10% of your body weight, and I have seen them go, um, you know, up to 30, 30 pounds or so. Um, and I'm sure you can get them custom at, at different weights also. But the idea is you're kind of, you're wrapped in a hug. So you have that like light therapeutic touch, like what we did when we gave ourselves a hug, but that that actually helps lower your cortisol levels. And your cortisol is one of your main stress hormones that really kicks into high gear when we're stressed and when we're not taking care of ourselves. And that can also cause when your hormones are out of, um, out of balance, that can cause a lot of other issues as well. So a weighted blanket is known to help with that or thought to help with that. And you don't have to spend a million dollars on them. I got one on Amazon for, I don't know, like $75 and it seems to be good. The only recommendation I would give you is get one with a cover because you can't wash the heavy weighted part. So you need something that you can remove and put back on so that that can be washed. And lastly, you want to set consistent going to bed and waking up time. So if you are as much as possible, you get your body into a rhythm, into a habit of when it's time to wake up, when it's time to go to bed so that you're not, if you're all over the place and maybe you have a schedule that doesn't lend itself to consistent wake up and going to bedtime. So as much as possible though, see if you can get into that routine because it's helpful. Your body knows and begins to learn that it's time to go to bed. It's time to wake up, time to go to bed, time to wake up. Okay. Relationships. Our next domain. So generally speaking, we want to spend time and make time for people who are good to us, for those people that believe in us and support us, sustain us, encourage us. And we need to feel supported 
by the people in our lives and confident that we'll be respected if we say no and that we can stand up for ourselves and our relationships and that you would have someone who will listen to you if you become upset. If you don't have someone in your life and you're hearing this description of this domain, or maybe this was an area of weakness for you, um, think about other ways you may be able to access this. So perhaps you want to seek the support of a therapist or a counselor or a group of like-minded individuals that you can connect with to really help um, bolster this domain. And I know this has been hard over the last 18 months with connecting with people and in, in the midst of an ongoing global pandemic, of course. Um, but it is important that you find those ways that you can connect, even if they look a little different than maybe they did um, 18 months ago. Our physical medical domain, another often neglected area of self-care. So we need to engage in and access our medical care. It's important that you go see your primary care physician, your eye doctor, any specialist that you need to see, whoever you might see, whoever your team of professionals are that you work with. We are very blessed here in Massachusetts that we have such a robust, I'm assuming everyone's from Massachusetts, but um, if you're listening to this and you're from elsewhere, I'm sorry, you should move here. It's the best state. Anyway, um, but we're blessed here. We have a lot of access to uh, the greatest hospitals in the world, so many uh, local hospitals and doctor's offices. So if we're working with a provider and it's not going well, like they're not listening to you and they're not, um, they're just, it's not building a good relationship. You don't feel supported by them. I strongly encourage you to change providers, to do the research and find someone who is going to be a partner with you in your healthcare. You don't need to go to the doctor and be scolded. You don't need to go to the doctor and be ignored or not listened to. And unfortunately, there are medical professionals that hold a lot of bias against different groups of people for whatever reason. I can speak about this for myself with um, folks who live in larger bodies. That tends to be a major area of bias in the medical profession. Not all, but some. So I need to be careful that the, the healthcare that I'm getting is weight inclusive or weight neutral. So same with dental care. You know, we need to go to the dentist, those biannual cleanings, those things come up, um, you know, pretty quickly. All of a sudden it's like, oops, got to go to the dentist again, but do it. Like, it's important that you do that and you take care of your physical body. Think of your car, like your car's check engine light comes on. What do you do? You go right to the mechanic. You got to also go get your check engine lights checked out and make sure you're going to the doctor. And I see the comment in the chat. This cannot be overstated. It's critical to have an HCP that is a partner in your healthcare. If you do not have that, please consider finding someone who is comfortable. Yes. Thank you, Tammy, for that uh, reiteration, because it is really important and it can be awkward, like, because we feel like, you know, um, you know, doctors should know and they should. And most of them are wonderful. But occasionally you're going to find those people that aren't necessarily uh, working with you as a partner. Additionally, we want to maintain cleanliness and hygiene of our physical body, um, no smoking or drug use, and try to limit any alcohol intake. Okay, immune systems. So much talk about immune systems, right? So we are in the midst of a global pandemic, as we know. And so people are caring all of a sudden about how to be healthy, which is awesome for a self-care expert. This is great for me. But this is how... So, so they, this comes up, like, how do we boost our immune system? How do we make sure our immune system is functioning in tip-top shape? Well, sure. These are four known ways that you can do that. You have to rest. You have to eat. You have to engage in activities that lower your stress, whatever that looks like for you. And you have to move your body. Now, none of this is to excess. None of this is crazy. None of this is extreme. I didn't say you have to diet and restrict your intake and do keto or paleo or whatever. I didn't say you have to do, you know, 9,000 hours on the treadmill every week. No, but you do have to engage in these things. And when you do that, that's going to make you function in a really healthy, happy, productive way. So in other words, by practicing self-care, because we've just talked about a lot of these things, 
resting, nutrition, reducing stress, moving. When you practice self-care, you're going to make sure that the body is functioning. All systems are functioning really well. Let's not forget about our eyes. All of this increased screen time is wreaking havoc on our eyesight because we are glued to screens, right? We're doing it right now, but that's okay. So we're going to actually take a little break. I want you to look at something. We're going to take a 20 second break. You're going to look at something somewhere else in the room. At least if you can look out a window or look far away, 20 feet away, if you can for 20 seconds, every 20 minutes, we're going to do it right now. Ready? Great. See if you can get into that habit. If you have a window that may be more ideal or just give yourself a break. Proper lighting is also really good for your eye health or whatever spaces you're working in. Proper eyewear, it's important to get those prescriptions up to date. Eye drops may be beneficial if you're prone to dry eye or anything like that. Keep your posture in mind as you're working at, you know, at a computer. It's easy to to slouch over the computer. Make sure you're maintaining proper posture. If you're prone to headaches, uh, lavender oil, ice packs, blue light blocking glasses, or actually they make now blue light blocking um, like uh, screen thingy, screen guards <laughs> for computers. You can try that. Um, stretches can be really good. And we'll do those together in just a moment. And the air quality of your space also plays a factor in your overall eye health. So something else just to be aware of as we're thinking about how to best care for ourselves. So let's do some neck stretching together. So I was noticing in early COVID, um, I was carrying so much tension in this area that it, it really hurt. Like the base of my skull and my shoulders and just ugh, neck it was terrible. And before I went to the doctor or started popping Motrin or maybe even something stronger, I thought, okay, this is stupid. Let me see how I can work on this myself. I wonder if I started intentionally doing some stretching, if I would fix the problem. And guess what? It worked. So I'm going to share it with you now. So I want you to do these stretches very slowly with me and gently listen to your own body. There is no prize at the end of the presentation for the most flexible neck. So don't push it. Listen to, I'll give you modifications for how you can increase the stretch, but you don't have to. And if you, for any reason, need to stop and you feel pain, by all means, please do that. Listen to yourself. So let's start. We're just going to drop one ear to one shoulder. So you should already feel a stretch on the opposite side of the neck. But if you'd like, you may gently place your hand on your head and you can even take your other hand and gently place it on your chin and just apply a little bit of pressure and you'll actually go a little deeper into the stretch. Totally not necessary, but may feel good. You're going to come up from that very slowly and you're going to drop to the opposite side. Again, if you're here and this feels you have good sensation and a stretch, stay there. Or you can help to increase it. You're going to let that go. And now we're going to look down at the ground. You can take your hands here as well and gently place them on the back of your head. And let that go. And now the same, we'll look up to the sky. And you can gently push on your chin. And let that go. 
Now you're going to look over one shoulder. And again, you can even use your hands here by gently applying some pressure to your chin and even taking the other arm and putting it behind your head. You can release that and to the other side. Again, if you're here and you feel stretch, excellent, just stay there. And let that go. Here's my favorite part. I want you to take two fingers on each hand and you're gonna place them up behind your head at the base of your skull, where it meets the very top of your spine, the top of your neck. I want you to just massage that area, just a little, just make some little, little circles. And then I want you to just press there. Pretend like you're trying to pop your head right off your neck as if you were a bobblehead. You're just creating a little space at the top of your spine and the base of your skull. And you can let that go. And then lastly, just do some neck circles. I like to do them in only half circles. But you can do full circles if you'd like. And actually I lied, that's not the last thing I'm gonna make you do. We're gonna do shoulder rolls also. So when you're done with neck circles, I want you to just roll out those shoulders, maybe two or three, couple, whatever, whatever feels good in each direction. Excellent. So the piece where we did that pushing at the base of your skull, if you've ever done a yoga class and you're lying in Shavasana at the end and the teacher comes over and like gently cradles your head and kind of pulls on it, same concept. You're just, we hold so much tension in our upper body. So you're just helping to release that and put a little space back in there. Great. That only took like three minutes and I bet you feel pretty good in that area. So if you did that consistently, maybe every day, maybe a couple of times a week, maybe whenever you feel like it, over time, you'll start to, if you're particularly prone to headaches and air and tension in this area, I would strongly suggest you start doing that daily at least. Okay. Our environmental domain of self-care. This is where we need to maintain a manageable schedule. As we were taking the quiz, I said, or the assessment, I said 60, 70, 80 hours a week, not, not maintainable, manageable, excuse me. Avoid taking on too many requests or demands. Maintain a comforting, pleasing, and organized living and workspace. I know it's hard, but when your space is cluttered and disorganized and chaotic, you can't relax because it signals to your brain there's more work to be done. Maintain balance between the demands of others and what's important to you. Address any physical barriers you may have to functioning. So maybe there's a particular supply or a, a support or a light bulb you need to get that you take the steps to acquire the things you need so you're setting yourself up for comfort and success. Wear suitable clothing for the weather. And I know this time of year here in Massachusetts anyway, it can be like all four seasons before noon, but as much as possible that we're aware of that. And do things every day that can make your living and work environment more pleasant. So I know for me, I love to be surrounded by photos of my loved ones and inspirational quotes and other little doodads and things that are significant to me. Um, to some people, it may be, uh, you know, too much stimulation, sensory overload, but that's how I like to have my workspaces. So do things in your own spaces to help bring some of that in for you as well, whatever that looks like. Okay, the self-compassion domain. This is where we need to notice without judgment. I'm gonna say that again, without judgment, when we're struggling, when we're feeling resistance or falling short on our goals or not completing as much as we'd like, we do not engage in punitive, harsh, critical, judgmental self-talk. We kindly acknowledge our own challenges and difficulties, remind ourselves that failure and challenge are part of the human experience and we are all human. You want to engage in supportive and comforting self-talk, those little voices in your head that sometimes are not 
super supportive that we don't give them any attention. And then we try to shift our thinking and our mindset to reframe issues for ourselves. We'll get into this more when we do the growth mindset, but I'm going to give you a uh, quick example. Early on in COVID, um, folks were saying things like, I'm stuck at home. And that, that feels icky. I'm stuck at home. If you reframed that and were able to say, I'm safe at home, actually has a whole different meaning. It just feels good better even in your body just saying that. So that's just one example. But when you start to get into and start to pay attention to that internal monologue and dialogue and what is going on and see if you're how you can reframe issues. And you can feel your feelings. All feelings are valid. Valid. If you need to cry, cry. If you need to punch your pillow, then punch your pillow, whatever it is, like, it's okay to, to have feelings and to feel them. We don't just put on a forced smile and pretend we're happy all the time. That's not going to help anybody. And that's not going to help you get in tune with what's going on. So you can really make changes that are going to be beneficial long-term plastering on a smile. Isn't going to do it not in the long run anyway. All right. This is again, one of my favorites. Ikea did this a couple, um, I don't know how many years ago at this point, several years back. Um, they actually did it in a school. And what they did was they took two plants, same plant, like same condition, same soil. They got the same sunlight, the same food, the same water. Everything was the same, except one plant received bullying messages, critical, judgmental, harsh, negative things. And the other plant received positive, comforting, positive, encouragement, compliments, nice things for 30 days, one month. That was the result. Yikes. That poor little plant on the left. I just want to give it a hug. We don't want to be the little plants on the left. And when we think about that internal dialogue, those, that internal voice, how we talk about ourselves to ourselves, to others, you're going to end up being the plant on the left if you are, if it's critical, negative. We're basically houseplants, which is more complicated emotions. <laughs> All right. The spiritual domain, our last domain, we are cruising here right on time. We are um, going to end tonight at around eight. So our last domain of self-care is the spiritual domain. This is where we want to experience meaning and or a larger purpose in our work or school life, our, as well as our private and personal life. So we can spend time in a spiritual place if that whatever that looks like for you. For some folks that may be in church or that may be a meditation room or self-care space or even outside in nature. So whatever that means for you. We can also read, watch, or listen to something that's inspirational. We can spend time with others who share our spiritual worldview. Maybe that's a church community or a volunteer group or the Salem State Alumni Association. Whatever it is, you can access that group. And spend time doing something that you hope will make a positive difference in the world. So maybe you volunteer at a soup kitchen or you volunteer to take out a little bit of your time to help someone else. However that looks for you. That's how we can work to build ourselves up in the spiritual domain. I tend to give a lot of presentations to teachers and teachers tend to do well or people that work in schools tend to do well in this domain because we see the value of our work every day in the students that we work with. Okay, so how do we do this? That was a lot. It was a lot of information. And you may be feeling a little overwhelmed. You may be thinking, she's crazy. She was kind of funny, but there's no way I can do any of this. Okay, first, here's what I need you to do. I need you to think small. And I need you to think about 
your schedule, like your life, whatever you've got going on. And I'm sure you have tons of responsibilities. We all do. So where are the little places that we can start to plant the seeds of a self-care routine? So maybe you can find within your schedule 15 minutes, five minutes, to have a little dance party or to do some stretching. Maybe you can find another five minutes and not every day, not everything every single day, but over the course of a week, you can hit a lot of these points. Maybe you find five minutes a day to write your uh, gratitude journaling or to meditate. Maybe you want to start with that one minute meditation every morning or you're going to get into a habit of doing what went well. Or maybe your sleep is really your area of weakness. So you want to start going to bed maybe 15 minutes earlier than you normally do. See how that feels. How I like to do this, and this may be like too much for, for people, and that's totally fine, but I, I'm very visual. I need to like see things written out for myself. So I did, I designed what I call Dr. MC's self-care success board, where I'll go and this hangs in the room actually behind me where I am now, and I'll actually lay it out. So I got a, a whiteboard that's magnetic and a day of the week magnets um, you can be as ornate or as basic as you like or you can do this in a different way put it on your calendar however you need to do it and then i'll map it out so i know okay on monday i have okay i'm working and then i have um, a, a presentation in the evening so let's see that's going to be a tough day so maybe though i can sneak in a five minute dance party before the presentation get that motivation up and running, and I'm going to um, meditate for five minutes in the morning, whatever it is. And you start to slot the things into your week so that it becomes just part of what you do. Maybe you're just going to start implementing some deep breathing. Whatever it is, it's okay. Just start. It doesn't matter how small. So when we think about this again, I'm going to restate this. Over time, small habits have a big impact. It may seem insignificant in the moment, but over time, you'll feel the benefits. You pick just one domain. We talked about a lot, and chances are you have a lot of areas that you could improve on. Totally fine. Totally normal. So pick one. So maybe it's the nutrition domain. You're know, like, you know, I'm really going to make an effort to actually eat my lunch every day, not while I'm working, or you're not going to skip breakfast. Maybe you're going to go on my website and make, download my <laughs> recipe for breakfast muffins, and you're going to start making breakfast, whatever it is. But start implementing just maybe one coping strategy. And some days will be better than others, and that's okay. You can't do all of this every single day and work a full-time job and take care of children and attend to your marriage or have a social life. Like you can't, like, I know that and that's okay. But that's why I like to think of it more over the course of a week. So what am I doing over the course of a week? Did I move my body joyfully? How did I feed myself? How was my sleep? Did I spend time with people who are good to me? You're worth it. Your health and your well being is worth it. And whatever you do for work, if you happen to be in the helping professions, if you work with other people um, in that way, when you put your needs first, it actually makes you better able to help other people. Okay. We're going to do one last exercise together. This is called Just For Now I Am. And this is actually a Reiki exercise. It was passed down to my Reiki master by her Reiki master and then down to me. And I love it. And I love to share it and please you use it as you see fit. It is included for you on the reference sheet. I'll say that again. I'll throw that link in the chat in case folks joined us later. It's drmcselfcare.com slash resources. There's also on the reference sheet, a link to a video of my leading this on um, Instagram live. So you can always access more content. I have guided meditations on my Instagram as well a few of them. So lots of ways you can 
connect with me after tonight and before our next session, part two, because I know you're going to tell all your friends and you're going to be back for two, three, and four uh, throughout the course of the school year. And I look forward to that time together with you. So let's do this now. So what we're going to do, I will cue you throughout the whole thing, but we're going to place our hands on different parts of our body. And you're going to say the sentence aloud, just for now I am. Think about that. Just for now, I am. Not a lot of room for negotiation there. And you're going to finish the sentence with the word on the right hand side. So just for now, I am connected. Just for now, I am clear. And we're going to nice and slow. We're going to take big, beautiful, deep breaths in through our nose and out through our mouth as we work our way through this. Okay. And someone in the chat, will this recording be posted somewhere? And can we share it with non-SSU people? Um, I believe the answer to that is yes and yes. Because um, the previous one I did in April is available to share. And I have that linked on my link tree on Instagram. So other people can see it. It's, I think it's a public link. Um, all right, let's do this. So I want you to think about, too, if you can, what you're saying just for now. I am connected just for now, not 10 minutes from now, not yesterday, now. So let's start. Sit up comfortable and whatever chair you're sitting on or whatever structure your body is resting on. You can close your eyes or lower your gaze if that's comfortable. I want you to really feel your body right now where you are. So you're feeling supported by whatever you're sitting on. You can feel your feet firmly planted into the ground, all four corners firmly pressing into the ground. And you're just here. I want you to put your hands on your head and we're going to take a nice big deep breath in and a long exhale through our mouths. Just for now, I am connected. I want you to move your hands to your eyes. Take a big deep breath in and a long exhale. Just for now, I am clear. Move your hands to the side of your head. Take a nice, big, deep breath in. And a long exhale. Just for now, I am focused. Move your hands to your throat. Take a nice, big, deep breath in. And a long exhale. Just for now, I am wise. Move your hands to your shoulders. Take a nice, big, deep breath in. And a long exhale. Just for now. I am relaxed. Move your hands to your heart. Take a nice big deep breath in. And a long exhale. Just for now, I am grateful. Move your hands to your solar plexus, which is your upper belly area, just above your belly button. Take a nice big deep breath in. And a long exhale. Just for now, I am calm. Move your hands to your abdomen, your lower belly area, below your belly button. Take a big deep breath in. 
and a long exhale. Just for now, I am forgiving. Move your hands to your lap. Let's take one last big deep breath in. Fill that belly all the way, slight pause at the top, and a nice long exhale. Emptying that belly all the way. Just for now, I am peaceful. Have your eyes closed and you may open them now. I always feel such a sense of calm wash over me when I take a couple of minutes to do that exercise. I've had teachers utilize this in Zoom. I've had um, folks translate it into different foreign languages to use in their foreign language classes, which I think is really cool. So I give you that, um, that is on the reference sheet for you to access at a later date and use it as you see fit. Um, it's a really great uh, grounding exercise. So let's wrap up here this evening. In the last couple of minutes, how are we feeling? Want to tell me in the chat, how are you feeling now? We had some, we had some emotions and some feelings coming in. To get started 90 minutes ago or so. Relaxed and content. Nice. Grateful that I had this opportunity to do this tonight. It was much needed. You're very welcome. Can't focus my eyes. They relax too much. Uh-oh. <laughs> Time for a nap. <laughs> Excellent. Much better, less tired and relaxed. Very good. Well, it's getting close to it's getting close to my bedtime. I'm not going to front and pretend I don't go to bed super early. So <laughs> I will be going to bed soon. Uh, excellent. Great. So really think about what we did tonight. Some of those things we did together and some of those things we talked about. And how can you begin to shift and let's think about this. If you are brave and want to tell me, because I care about myself and others, I will practice self-care by. What are we, what are we thinking? What's what's what when, what's resonating with you right now that you're like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that. Don't worry, I won't hold you to it. I'm not gonna follow up with you. Or ah, my first priority needs to be improving my sleep. Excellent. So we talked about lots of ways to do that. So maybe you can start to invite some of that into your life in a consistent way. Sleep is really, really important. As a society, we don't honor resting. Moving more and improving my sleep. Hopefully one will lead to the other. All right. I like it. And it can be little. It doesn't have to be epic things. Very good. Well, you can think about that. And remember, because I care about myself and others, you first, your oxygen mask on first, then you help other people. Okay. And if you're looking for other ways, oh, somebody else exercising better, doing what went well and what could be better with possible journal. Awesome. Excellent. Great ideas. And exercise and get, try to get in touch with what feels good. Like what's joyful movement for you? What do you, how do you like to move your body? Might take some exploration, might take some trial and error, but it'll be worth it. These are the ways you can connect with me. I recently launched a podcast. It's available on all major platforms where I interview other educational experts, healers, friends. We talk about all sorts of things. I get into lots of sharing on the uh, podcast. I tend to be a pretty open person 
uh, in, gen- in general, thank you, Tammy, for the plug. Tammy highly recommends the podcast. Tammy's been following me for a while. I did a presentation in her uh, school district um, back in the spring, a 10-hour one. She's already spent 10 hours with me and came back to hang out with me tonight. So thank you. I very much appreciate that. And so you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, all the places um, that you can connect with me. And I do send out, I don't spam anybody on emails. I don't sell my list. I send like one, two emails a month, um, just keeping you up to date with what's going on and up, up recent blog posts or podcast episodes, or you can subscribe to my blog as well, where I post weekly content all related to self-care. I'm happy to stay on if folks have other questions. We are out of time technically for what was scheduled for this evening, but again, happy to stay on um, if folks have any questions. If not, thank you and have a wonderful evening.